Let's talk about the four variations in accommodations and modifications that special education teachers have to make. One of them is time, adapting the time allowed for learning and task completion of testing. We're not going to cover that one because right now we have all the time in the world. But I'm going to show you how Cami can help you with the other three. One being the variation of input, adapting the way instruction is delivered. Another is variation of output, adapting how a student can respond to this instruction. And the third one that I'm going to help special education teachers with is the variation of size, adapting the number of items the student is expected to complete. To think that Cami is only a PDF reader where you can annotate with ink or with text would be narrow-minded. In front of me, I have a Google Doc, and a lot of teachers are uploading to Google Classroom or other learning management systems, Google Docs or Google Slideshows for their students to look at, interact with, complete, and turn in. But what about making modifications to it? How are special education teachers supposed to do this? I'm going to take this document, and before we actually assign it to our classroom, I'm going to open it in my Google Drive with Cami. So if I go to Google Drive and I find the document and I right click and I go to open with, I'm going to go annotate with Cami. And when I do this, this is what pops up. So my document is now inside of Cami. Let's talk about the variations of accommodations that special education teachers can make for their students. The first one is material read. That is an incredibly common accommodation for students. Since we brought this from a Google Doc, we're able to interact with the text. And text-to-speech is going to give us one way to provide that accommodation. So if I highlight the sentence, the model below represents a division problem. We're able to play and hear exactly what is on this sheet. We can change the voice, we can change the speed, and we can go ahead and loop it so it goes over and over again. We can also, if we need to, go to the previous sentence or go on to the next sentence. So that's one way to deliver materials read. Another is within our comment section. We're going to add different comments to this material before we give it to our students. So one of them that we have is text comment. If we need to provide further instructions, further directions, we can click wherever we need. So if we have the problem here, which equation is represented by the model, we could click and we could go ahead and type in any instructions or any further instructions that we would like to give to our students. We can then take that dot and if we want to put it down in a specific place so that our students see the note, it will move the annotation with it. We can also change the color of this dot. If we wanted to make sure that it stood out a little bit more, maybe you'd want to make it a different color. So we could change the color as well for students. Whenever you make text comments, you can also go ahead and use your voice. Voice typing is available for this. So the minute that I click on this microphone, it's going to interpret what I'm saying and switch my voice to text. Here are the directions. You can see that worked flawlessly. I'm going to delete that particular comment and I'm going to go on to the next one, which is voice. This goes back to our text to speech. So if I do a voice comment, I could go ahead and read the question to my students. If I put that click wherever I want, the minute that I start clicking, it's going to record my voice. So I'm going to actually delete that. I'm going to click and read the question once I click. Which equation is represented by the model? I click stop and then I am finished. And if I hit play, which equation is represented by the model? 
It's a quick and simple way to get directions read for your students. The third one, is we're gonna go ahead and do a video comment. This is where you can use your webcam and show your face to your students. You're going to be able to give face-to-face -face interaction with your students, which they need now more than ever. Whenever I click, you can see that I pop up on the side over here. And then all I have to do is remember that when we do click, it's going to start recording. So I'm gonna X out of that for a second. So with video comments, you're gonna notice the same thing happens as it did with voice comments. Once I click, it's going to begin recording and it's gonna record my face as well. So I'm going to click. Jason will use a one third gallon pitcher to fill an empty three fourths gallon water jug. How much water will he need in order to completely fill the water jug? And I'm just gonna hit done when I am finished. And the last and probably the most powerful is screen capture. If you needed to actually walk through the answers for your students, or you wanted to show them examples before they actually did whatever it is that they're doing, interacting with your content, you could go ahead and do that. When I click on screen capture, it says click or select text anywhere on the page to make a screen capture comment. And so when I click, it's gonna take just a couple of seconds to load. It's gonna ask, we wanna share our entire screen. And so now it is recording. You can see on the right hand side, if I had a stylus and I wanted to go ahead and show exactly what the process was for the greatest common factor between 42 and 84, you're going to be able to see that a line was made. I'm going to make some squiggles so that you can see that they, it is actually recording my screen. So step by step instructions can be done for students. Just hit done and it will save off to the side. Once again, if I needed to move that dot, if I didn't click in the correct place, I could go ahead and move it using my selection tool. Another part that you have to think about with video comments is what if we need to use sign language for our students? What if we have students that require us signing the directions or signing further explanation to a particular problem. You're able to record yourself using your webcam and be able to sign what it is that you would like to convey to your student. Other modifications that may need to take place would be color coding. If you wanted to make sure that you were highlighting or color coding certain items inside of certain questions, you can go ahead and use the markup tool. The box highlighter is great for this. So if you wanted to make sure that they were getting specific pieces to the problem, you could go ahead and highlight that. All of these annotations won't be able to be touched or modified by the student. They'll only be able to see them and interact with them. Reducing the number of questions on a particular assignment is also an accommodation that is very common. So what if I have a question that I don't want? Well, the easiest way to do this is to go to drawing and select white as your color. And if you don't have it, you can go to your color palette and put it in there, just hit save. And then what I usually do is select the largest stroke thickness, and then it basically serves as an eraser tool. So you're gonna be able to go over the top of whatever question that you want your student to not interact with. And again, it's just going to get rid of it. Also, if you wanted to just get rid of the numbers of questions, you could go ahead and delete those as well using this markup tool. On top of all of these modifications that I've shown you, you can now make this a hyperdoc. You can use a text box to go ahead and type in whatever it is that you want and then link it to either a website for students to go ahead and use for help, or maybe it's a video from YouTube or somewhere else that you want to link for students to be able to watch. If I had a video that I wanted students to watch, 
I could go ahead and type. And I can now link this by going ahead and highlighting it, going up to the top to link, and I can type in or cut and paste any link that I want them to go to and interact with. I paste, I save, and now that is interactive for my students.